Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Final Fantasy VII Remake playthrough, where we are doing more side quests. Weren't we supposed to, like, save Eris or something? Let's talk to some people in the town. Yeah. <laughs> Meteors falling in seven days. I'm sorry, I don't know why I thought pushing that piece of, like, rubble on the ground was so funny. I just, I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at this point they don't necessarily have much in the way of real time pressure because they're they're pretty sure that Aerith is going to be treated well while she's with Shinra oh, well they aren't aware of Hojo being Hojo Hojo, Hojo. <laughs> but in this continuity, there isn't a whole lot of reason to expect that, you know, like they need to rush, rush, rush. So Tief is like, uh, yeah, I know we, we have our things to do, but can we help people if we find the time? So, you know, it's a moment where you get, where you get a chance to, you know, just chill out and help the people down in the slums because it's been a rough couple of days for these people, you know? I mean, it's been a rough couple of days for us, too. So, yeah. Also, ghosts are abducting children again. So, you know, it's probably a good thing that we that we, that we we took the time to do this. <laughs> uh, just use a phoenix down there. I'll take care of them. That. I heard that and everyone disappeared. Well, we didn't manage to save the ghosts from the train graveyard. They're still dead. But, um... <laughs> anyway. So... One of the things about the side quests at this part, part of the game is that they have some pretty goddamn challenging mini-bosses. God damn it. It's, it's like the only enemy in the game that can dodge the assess skill, too. These ghosts are annoying because they're constantly fading in and out. So, um, it, it's really hard to hit them with anything. <laughs> it's a callback to their original fight, where if you smack them with a physical attack, they will disappear for a turn. Uh, so you have to hit them with magic attacks consistently. I'm not sure what the case was for these ghosts because it's been a while. I think they're just, I think they're just heavier heavier hitting uh, regular ghosts. Yeah. Yeah, these these ghosts when they fade out they become impossible to target, which was not the case for the ghosts in um in the original game. And I think when they vanished you might have still been able to hit them with magic, but uh, no, you couldn't attack them at all. You couldn't attack, attack them at all. Yeah. Okay. You could still target them and yeah. have a have a character's ATB command ready to go for when they you fade back. Get into all you. Final Fantasy one and swing at nothing. <laughs> but here, when did they fix the being able to like? Not I think as soon at dead as the second game, actually. But okay. you know, fading in and out is really annoying because as you just saw as i was targeting the staggered ghost the other ghost faded into view in between me and that ghost and started wailing on me like <laughs> i'll save you <laughs> safe we're dead you okay anyway i mean so was sephiroth for a bit and <laughs> well you know safer sephiroth is the, yeah. like, the, the most ridiculous <laughs> mistranslation in the series what is it supposed to be? Seraph. It's supposed to be Seraph. Oh, because he's a god or some shit. Not Seraph, but Sefer. Um, Sefer? Which is a similar kind of thing, yes. Um, S I am Sefer Sephiroth. Yes. This is my friend Cloud Cloud. <laughs> and Tief Tifa. Okay. I'm just, imagine, I'm just imagining now it's, it's a, for Safer Sephiroth, it's just regular Sephiroth. But uh, there's like. A foam wedge at the end of his sword so he can't stab anyone. <laughs> Do the safety dance. <laughs> okay. The other annoying thing about these ghosts is that they have a, an ability called Essence Drain, which just uh, activates in a wide area around them when they when, when they activate it. And if you don't get the hell out of dodge, it drains your, he your health really quick and heals them. So, um... Uh, your NPC characters are pretty good about, sta about, like, getting out of the way when they see it coming. But you have to remember to get out of the way yourself. Otherwise, you're going to regret every life decision you've ever made that brought you to this point. Kind of like I did while I was fighting this. 
<laughs> Man, why did I agree to be on Brain Scratch? That was clearly a waste of time. Anyway, to be fair, Lewis was the first to join. Also, one of them puts th- one of them puts themselves, or maybe both of them can. I don't know. One of them puts themselves under a permanent goddamn um, reflect status. <laughs> Which I well, that's what that's why Barrett has his, his limit break, so he can just blow in the high hell. Yeah, I think... Okay. I don't care about your ice to the face. <laughs> I think there is a way to, um... Damn it. You have to use the... You have to dispel it. Yeah, you you have to have... Have the dispel spell on you after an entire game of not needing it. <laughs> so... Good luck you with never that. Know. God <laughs> damn it. Essence drain. Why? Ugh. Anyway, the mini bosses in this section can really mess you up. This is um like, you know, if you're if you're into challenge, this is a good section to suddenly decide to be completionist with if you've been ignoring the rest of the side quests. Because the bosses are are pretty are pretty great. Like the um, the medicine ingredients side quest that we're doing. One of the ingredients is something that you buy from the Moogle shop. One of them is a flower that you find at the church. But like the other last one, last one requires you to go some do some monster slaying. Now, yeah, the, the last one requires you to go all the way back to the underground laboratory in Sector Seven, um, where you fought that weird failed experiment boss, and there's a behemoth there. And it's actually, like, not just a random behemoth that's sitting there, but you re- if you remember, while you were there the first time, Barrett walked past the sealed door, and you could hear roaring and banging around inside it. it. That was the behemoth. They set it up that early. So you can go back and... <laughs> that was enough to can make me go back. <laughs> yeah. The only question mark about that quest is that for some reason, the note with the ingredients on it that, that that starts you off on the side quest knows that the behemoth can be found in the underground laboratory that nobody knows about. I'm... How did the doctor know that? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a question mark. Not gonna Maybe lie. they did some reconnaissance beforehand. Oh, like, guys, this, this, is, this is too dangerous. I'm just going to get some mercenaries to do it. Uh, I mean, we found... I mean, this. he says that it's usually Aerith who finds the ingredients for him. How does that work? She puts on an ninja attire and crawls in the ceilings and only comes down to get the ingredients which she needs to to avoid the behemoth trap. What, all Mission all mission Impossible? Like? Yeah, basically. You know, she's hanging on a vine made of flowers instead of like just like silly string or some other shit. Whatever. And I haven't seen Mission Impossible in so long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's finally kill one of these things. There we go. Ghosts don't die. Let's test that. Then a blue coin just popped up out of nowhere. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing it wrong. You're usually running in circles for like five times until it just <laughs> gets dizzy and shrinks. Yeah, that's the Mr. Eye. Yeah, no, but still. Cloud's standing behind it, and it's just going like, oh, my God. <laughs> Shit, shit, shit. It's essence draining again. That's the thing that... The, the sparkles are obviously the like the AOE effect, but it's like it's not as distinct as like a circle, basically. So just like don't even risk it. I I keep like thinking it's about to end and then prematurely walking into it before it disappears. Uh, um, so so somewhat related but not actually related question: Why are ghost types in Pokemon weak to ghosts? Because only ghosts can hurt other ghosts. Uh, but why? This yeah. thing keeps using essence drain, and it's annoying because I can't get up close to it. Well, there was the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, uh, and the train ghost that taught him to interact with the physical world was able to push and shove the dude. And as far as I'm aware, nothing of the living world can do that to a ghost. So maybe that's their basis. Maybe that's maybe that's rooted into some sort of old mythology with ghosts and spirits. Spirits can only hurt spirits. Uh, magic but, must defeat magic. But that also goes. That also comes into question of like, ghosts is other weakness in Pokemon, which, to my knowledge, is only what. Dark. 
Ghosts in Dark. Well, Dark, because you're literally tapping into Lucifer's power for that. Wait, that that's sense. your, that's these kids' hair? Can we let the ghosts take them back? <laughs> <laughs> I like how the cat on the left is basically, basically dressed up as a Ghostbuster. <laughs> that kid looks like he's trying way too hard, yeah. Anyway, so we saved the kids. Yay. I thought when I took this quest that I have to run around trying to find the kids around Same. the town. But I think that was an earlier quest. That was an earlier quest. I thought they were making us do it again. <laughs> it's interesting, though. They give you the mission, the missing children quest. And then, like, I think unless you check your map, you don't get any direction as to where to look. Yeah, you're supposed to rely on that ghost trail showing you where to go. Anyway, so we have disproven the hypothesis that ghosts don't die, and <laughs> <laughs> they return to the planet. Hmm, good Again. point. They died. No, they return to the planet. That's Again. dying. That's dying. No. <laughs> That's what dying is. No, I don't think anything really truly dies in Final Fantasy VII. They return to the planet, and they come back somewhere else. Anyway, there are three lost chocobos, and they're all along this route. Two of them trigger monster battles. This one triggers a real pain in the ass of a monster battle. It's a small thing, but I kind of like how the Chocobo references both the new cry and the old cry. So earlier you were talking about dragons not behaving like dragons when they're outside. Well, um, you'll be happy to know, Ted, that this dragon behaves very much like a dragon. Oh, you <laughs> see, the, I hate it, though, because it's a drake and not a dragon. Drakes are different. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it behaves like it has wings and fire breath, okay? Yeah, this, this is a spry fucker. It will swoop across the goddamn field and but the other thing about it though is that it is that it uses gravity magic, which not only, you know, hurts like a motherfucker when it hits, but also has a tendency to suck you in and inhibit your mobility and your movement. And your AI companions have no idea how to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, how do you dot gravity? Hmm. Why you're su you're succumbing to gravity right now? In fact, gravity is spinning us around on an axis at hundreds of miles an hour, hurtling through space. Isn't we... science <laughs> wonderful? I do think this thing is afraid of arrow, though. If you still have the wind mag if magic you... at all, also if you are lucky enough to hit with it. Yeah, yeah. That's the unfortunate thing about the rust drake is that it never sits in one place, and that's like, that just means like, there's basically no chance of you ever hitting it with arrow unless it's already staggered. Um, I have to keep reminding myself that you mean the spell and not hitting it with an arrow. I'm like, you're like running up and trying to stab it with one. Well, I, well, I mean, you can do that in D and D. Yeah, for a one D four. Points of damage. I mean, Good you, job. You could try that in Skyrim. You're about as likely to hit it as you are with the arrow spell here. Um, <laughs> I you have to you have to understand my pain. All right, the dragons in Skyrim. You have to fight them in with a first person combat system where the only projectiles you have are actual projectiles which are delayed on, which are delayed from shooting and traveling to the target and hitting or missing them. All of your magic spells, all of your arrows, they take, like, they're impossible to aim because your target is never going to be where they are when you shoot. And if it's something regular like a human that's, strafe cir that's circle strafing around you, you could account for that. But the dragons fly around too goddamn fast, so the only effective way to fight them is to wait until they land. Um, which takes, like, a goddamn year. And then you just kind of have to stand in their fire breath and tank the damage while you wail on their face. If you're lucky, you have meat shield guard soldiers fighting the dragon for you. And they might be the ones standing in the fire breath. But 
the point is, <laughs> it's and then after you defeat the dragon, there'll be some bandits off in the corner saying, "We could totally take him." <laughs> to add insult to injury, whenever you kill a dragon, the spoils are excellent because you get all this dragon bone that you can that you can stash away in storage for later to craft things with, or just sell for a boatload of money. But it weighs a ton, so you're you're gonna have to like pick it up in like three trips. Oh, oh! <laughs> Skyrim has an encumbrance system. Yes. Yeah, that's why I always make the joke where you're like like 299 pound carrying capacity. You pick up a one ounce feather, suddenly you're encumbered. <laughs> um, okay, now that's like absolutely like killed any interest I've had in Skyrim. Like, in g- load w- limits are BS. Like, I get why they but, exist, but just generally speaking, whenever I've played D&D, we've house ruled that if it's like something that can fit on your person, sure. If you're trying to carry like a boulder, no, you know, like if it can fit in your if it can fit in your pocket that's has that's empty at the moment, you can carry it. Generally speaking, um, Skyrim and Oblivion do follow that rule, where if it's a small thing that shouldn't have like any substantial weight, it just doesn't have a weight stat. But um, like if it's a sword, y- yeah, you kind of have to watch your weight. Your weight is fairly generous, um, but like dragon bone is like one of the heaviest things in the game. So, um, yeah. It's so cute, the chocobo. The chocobos are adorable. I'm glad we saved them. They look delicious. They have to kind of do. Wait. I got an argument argument with a friend the other day, and they were like, you would try to eat that thing? And I'm like, absolutely. They (laughs) try to eat chicken. (laughs) People eat chocobos, yeah. I know, they look absolutely scrumptious. I would absolutely eat one. Well, you know... I, I, it's a chicken. It's a giant chicken, I tell you. <laughs> look, I, look, I see people eating chocobos a lot more than I see people eating horse, and people do eat eat horse. Horse bird. Apparently, it's quite good. But um, Kentucky Fried Chocobo, anyone? <laughs> uh, still KFC, holy shit. Uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a variant of the Fat Chocobo mount called the Original Fat Chocobo, and yeah. its item description is a KFC joke. Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite variant on that though is Kakariko Fried Cuckoo and it's just a link in uh shaped like Colonel Sanders on the front. I mean how do you kill the cho- how do you kill the uh cuckoos then they're invincible? Um you take a bite and then suddenly you hear uh, a rumble in the distance as thousands of cuckoos come and beat the shit out of you. Okay, that's sad. Imagine a kid just getting just, just taking a bite out of sandwich. Just like, <laughs> like, I run, child, run. <laughs> that's just how the game is already. Link's usually like six years old. I go to rest on the goddamn bench to heal after the big ass dragon, and then yeah, well, the Drake's are already there. That's, that's the Drake's bench now. Like in the same spot, monsters have already respawned, and there are more Drakes. Sorry, is your name on that bench? At the very least, it's not at the rest. Drake, it, it, so it's a bit like. It's a bit like the Soulsborne games where whenever you rest at a campfire, all the monsters in the area respawn. Um, but in that game, you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> you can experience grind in Dark Souls. You have to. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to, but it's like, assuming it's your first playthrough. It's strongly advisable. Um, yes. But, like, but that's also because your experience and your money are the same quote-unquote currency. So, yeah. Oh, and when you die, you lose all your money unless you pick it up. Yeah, yeah. When, yes. when you die, it's all it all all of all of it drops in the in that one place. If you die before you get back to it, it's gone. It's gone. Yep. Yeah. So it's generally a good idea to do your intentional grinding near where your save point is. Does the game auto save when you die in a Dark Souls game? Uh, I want to say. Uh, I don't remember if it auto saves. I think it auto saves, actually. Yeah. I mean, when you die in a Dark Souls game, you don't really. I mean, yeah, you die, but you keep, like, but you, but you just respawn and. Yeah, pr- but if you, I dropped like a bunch of money and I didn't think I had any chance of getting back to it, I would reset the game uh, and then just try again. Because no, just you know what? Then I would think they would auto save then to prevent. To prevent that kind of bullshit. To prevent scumming, yeah. 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 I mean, that's just kind of... I've kind of just grown up purposefully safe scumming. That's just something that I've learned to do. 
I mean, um, I mean, the Dark Souls games also have this kind of social multiplayer-ish aspect baked in, where you're connected to a network unless you turn it off, and you're seeing yeah. like the ghosts of other players getting like the ghosts of other players where they where wherever they eat shit, seeing them miming the moment where they ate shit. Um, you see, that part looks cool about the Dark Souls game. The part that doesn't seem cool to me is the people who can just raid your your playthrough out of nowhere. And play you offline. Can turn, you can turn that. You can turn that off. So. But don't you have to turn off all the other stuff though? You too? play it. You, you turn it off by playing it offline. Yeah. So it's like, I'd like to have the cool. Oh, this is an interconnected world kind of stuff without the people coming in to take my lunch money stuff. It's yeah. kind of. A, uh, I mean, but. I understand why it's like that because the game is significantly easier when you have assistance. At, it, there has to be there has to be a cost to that, right? You know. Um, then of course you so, can leave messages for for other players. So don't believe yeah. anything you see. Written don't believe on the floor, anything they say ever, except for great chest ahead. No. No. I mean. <laughs> I guess the thing is, is that the thing I've always heard about the Dark Souls games is that they're supposed to be hard but fair. Um, and I feel I mean, like having speaking, someone come out of nowhere and kick you in the nuts isn't really fair, especially when they're bunches of levels higher than you. So I feel like I would miss out on all these cool features if I had just turned the Wi-Fi off entirely. But it sounds unbearable to keep it on because I don't want people bullying me. <laughs> Please, I am small babby. Uh, let me see. Well, there is a cost to raiding that does somewhat dis that s does somewhat discourage people from doing it too often. I know. I'll play it on the PS3 version. Nobody's playing that well, version. Anymore. No, it's, you can't even invade another world without using an item, though. I think. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. There's so the, you do. You only have a finite attempt. Uh, so. So, yeah, basically, players aren't just doing it for shits and giggles. Oh, some people are. You... Oh, some people definitely are. Like, people that have, have nothing else to do in the game are definitely just doing it for shits and giggles. But y y you're likely not to run into those people that often. Because, you know, because there are benefits to raiding other realms. You're doing it for, I think, souls, and you're doing it for other items that you can't get elsewhere. Yeah. Anyway. These guys are back again. Joy. What does old lady want us to do? To basically find Don Corneo's stash. Well, three stashes, actually. Well, she she she's looking for the key. It turns out her granddaughter has the key. So we need to find Kyrie. So, yeah, this, this is the fetch quest that will uh, grant you access to three hidden doors that that are scattered around i recommend doing this now because you'll have to go through the sewers a bit later as part of the main story and one of the treasure caches is in the sewers so yeah. so wait so you have to go back to the sewers three times no no, no if you do not pick up this quest yeah, if, if you don't pick up this quest before you finish the sewers you'll have to go oh, back to oh the okay uh, i thought we had already been to the sewers twice by this point no we've only no. been there once okay. um so, uh, do this quest now and get the key so that you can just pick up the treasure on your way through. It is a bit awkward, the timing uh, of picking it up on your way through, because according to the story, you are under some time pressure. But, um... Yeah, well, Meteor's falling in seven days, and... We have to go We have to go to Don Corneo. He's hanging out there right now. He's viable to leave at any second. Out of a second, I have to fight the Ninja Turtle. They told me Meteor's falling in seven days. I went to sleep, woke up the next day, didn't move an inch. I think I'm fine. So in Phoenix, right, it said that the train ride between uh, Phoenix's office and uh, the town where Maya lives is a two hour train ride. So I did once like go back and forth between the two of them like 16 times in a row and like, hey, I missed my trial. Maya's <laughs> dead. <Dad." laughs> this battle is interesting because just out of nowhere, we're fighting three goddamn ring maws which are, as the icon next to their name indicates, variant monsters rather than just regular ones. So, um, random mini-boss? Question mark? They're basically just a more annoying version of the, um, of the goddamn clingy alien monster things. No, the most annoying versions of 
Oh, otherwise normal monster is. We're going to see what the last chocobo. Oh, yes. That sub-boss is something. We'll see that in the next part, I believe. Yeah, I think I think that's when I get to it. Yeah, next part. <laughs> no, I know I got to it in this recording. I'm just trying to remember whether it was this video or next video. Well, clearly it's not this video. We only have two minutes left. Yeah, oh. I'm just saying, he can, he can yeah. run. He can run like hell. You are I right. saw that this video, this area is called Nuts and Bolts Heights. Are there vehicle sections in this area? No. Sadly, no. Aww. No. There are broken vehicles. And uh, broken dreams. Oh, man, just like the real game, but I'm Tish. <laughs> <laughs> Just to preempt the comment section, I know that on its own merits, Nuts and Bolts is apparently a fine game. It's just... It's not a Panjokazui game. Who wanted it to be like that <laughs> is the uh, is the important thing. I so, mean, I, yeah. I, I, I... Has it been long enough for Nuts and Bolts to be considered a great follow-up to it? I would... No, I it's... No, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anyone considers it a great game, but it's a perfectly fine game. It's the same thing as Metroid Prime Federation Force. For a lot of people, it doesn't matter how good the game itself is. It's not the game they wanted. So... You know what? I would, like... I would be totally down with, like, this weird spin-off-y follow-up to the Banjo games if the writing of the of the, the, the weird spin-off-y follow-up wasn't, like, more or less shitting on the Banjo games. So... It, I think, again, it's one of those things that had that game come out in, like, 2003, people wouldn't have been upset. It was that the game came out 10 years after the original and they hadn't seen a game in forever and they just wanted a normal sequel yeah and the it's writing the, and the writing of the not normal sequel they got seemed to be making fun of them for wanting it so yeah it, um, i mean honestly it is kind of funny like the joke is that oh they haven't had a game in so long they're out of weight they're overweight and out of shape which is kind of funny it's funny once but you can't keep doing it no well it's like they kind of just keep on overdoing the joke is the thing it's like oh her 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 these games are old. It's like, okay, yeah, that is, that's funny. Banjo's out of weight. Dur -her -her. Nobody liked picking up random collectibles. Okay, I actually did like picking up random collectibles. <laughs> Dur -her -her, the game's old. You get it? Uh, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a Teen Titans Go problem whenever they make fun of more serious quote-unquote DC stuff. It's like, yeah, okay, we get it. I like the idea just now that Cloud sees Johnny in the distance, turns around, and just sits down on a bench. Is like, here we go. <sighs> <sighs> I was hoping he'd die with the plate. <laughs> of all the people to survive, why did you? There is no justice in this universe. Jesse died for this. 